And well, if you've been following my channel for quite some time or if you're into tech, you actually know what resizable bar and smart access memory is. Basically, they are the basically the same thing, which is resizable bar, but smart access memory is AMD's implementation of resizable bar, which has been proven to be way better in the past two years, as you can see, for example, uh, on this video that I made some weeks ago, where smart access memory delivers a huge performance boost in some scenarios. Well, it seems that resizable bar for NVIDIA does not. In most cases, it even decreases the performance. But with both smart access memory and resizable bar, the companies actually need to implement those features software-wide per game, okay? So even if you enable smart access memory or resizable bar on your BIOS and then enable it on, the, on your Radeon software kit, for example, it doesn't mean that it will work in all games because it may be disabled or hard disabled via software for that particular game. For example, Horizon Zero Dawn was one of those games that did not support smart access memory firstly, but then it got an update for smart access memory because AMD did not have the profile for it before and then they had it, they implemented it and it was crazy good. And this all to say that Nvidia does not have profiles for most games, so while you're still enabling the, the resizable bar on your BIOS, on your motherboard BIOS, and it says it is enabled on Windows, it may not be working for some games, okay? Because Nvidia is not enabling it driver-wise. And this is where the magic begins. There seems to be a software called Nvidia Inspector, where you can alter all your settings software-wise per game basis. And if you access one of these games on the NVD Inspector, you can see that it is green-lighted. It means that it is enabled automatically by the driver, so NVIDIA has a profile for it. But if you go to that Space Remake, for example, you can see that it is not enabled automatically because it is not green-lighted, it is in grey light. Okay, so the grey color is there, but you can manually unlock it to use rebar and you can choose, for example, the profile used for Assassin's Creed Valhalla or any other games. Now, will the performance increase actually apply to all games or some games will actually lose performance or gain no performance at all? Well, let's not drag this anymore and let's go into it. Today's video sponsor is GVG where using my SKG discount code leads to a 25% off across several products, making a Windows 10 serial key only $16. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and all you need to do is to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. So before I started making this video, I firstly checked which games that I had that according to NVIDIA Profile Inspector did not have resizable bar enabled in the drivers, and I found at least 10 of them, hence making this video. Force enabling resizable bar is actually pretty easy, all you have to do is run NVIDIA Profile Inspector, go to the profile search bar on the top left corner and search for the game you want. After that, scroll down to the division 5 slash common, then enable rebar feature. As for the rebar options and size limit, you can just use the preset profiles for other games like AC Valhalla, Battlefield 1 and so on. At least, that's what I did. As for the benchmarks, let's start with the star of the show, Dead Space Remake. In this game, the performance uplift is just insane. Even at 1440p ultrawide, we had a 22% performance uplift in the averages and 81% in the 1% lows, leading to a much smoother and enjoyable gameplay experience. And that's all for free. On the Callisto Protocol, the performance uplift wasn't as noticeable as on that Space Remake. Well, not even close, but it's still there, getting a mild 5.5% performance increase with a 7% increase in the 1% lows, which isn't bad at all. Doom Eternal also presented some nice performance uplift when force enabling the resizable bar on the RTX 4070 Ti. At 1440p ultrawide, we went from 267.5 to 283.2 average FPS, being that a 5.8% performance increase with a little higher increase of 8.9% in the 1% lows. It wasn't much, but free performance is free performance. 
The Witcher 3 Next Gen was also included in the testing kit, including the most recent ray tracing patch, even though it wasn't really tested here. In this case, although we saw a small performance uplift in the averages, the 1% lows decreased, meaning that the overall smoothness of the gameplay was even worse when force enabling recessible bar. And these results remained after some more benchmarks that I did, where the 1% results were always worse when we enabled resizable bar. I guess that's a thing as well. Ghostwire Tokyo is one of those games that looks really good, but have some stutters here and there, and that's the downside. Gladly, force-enabling resizable bar seems to fix a big chunk of those, increasing the 1% lows from 46.5 FPS to 88.2 FPS, which translates to a 89.6% increase, which is insane. And even the averages got a nice performance uplift of 7.5%, which is always welcomed. Very nice results in this game. Moving to Resident Evil Village, the performance increase was unnoticeable. I mean, really. You would not notice any performance increase whatsoever unless you were benchmarking like I did. So even at over 140 average FPS, this game saw virtually no benefits from using resizable bar, at least with the current profile. Maybe a dedicated profile could help much more. Who knows? Running Guardians of the Galaxy, we have a mild increase in the averages, but exactly the same results in the 1% lows, which is interesting considering that so far, apart from one game, our biggest advantage has been the increased 1% lows. In here, the average performance uplift was about 4%, which once again, wouldn't be anything really noticeable in a real gameplay scenario, but the 1% lows stayed exactly the same. Now. Forspoken was indeed an interesting benchmark, as even after testing it several times, the results still came up the same way, with the forced resizable bar delivering lower performance. This game is not the epitome of game optimization, of course, but it should at least not lose performance, I guess. I believe this may be due to the use of direct storage in this game that may affect the usage of the resizable bar with at least the preset profiles. Maybe a specific profile made by NVIDIA for this title could theoretically increase the performance. Dying Light 2 also saw a decent performance uplift of 5.6% on the average FPS and 4% in the 1% lows. And although the performance uplift was not that great, it is still welcomed, because once again, it is free performance. Overall, the game performed pretty well, and these results were in the parts that I tested. Maybe in another part of the map the results could have been different, for the better or for the worse. The last game tested is Fortnite, using DX12, Nanite Geometry, TSR Epic set to Quality Mode, and Lumen Settings set to High. In here we have the same case scenario as in The Witcher 3, where the average FPS got increased, but at the same time the 1% lows got lower. I tested this several times and the results would always be like this, with the game stuttering more when force enabling resizable bar, which shouldn't happen. I do believe though that with the proper implementation by Nvidia the game could have a considerable performance uplift, as we were already seeing a 4% increase in the averages, so maybe a specific profile could lead to an even higher average, and of course even higher 1% lows. Once again, who knows. Overall, the 10 games average is nothing ridiculously high, with a 9.7% performance increase in the 1% lows and 5.4% increase in the averages. This of course because some games like Forspoken, Fortnite and The Witcher 3 are there, actually reducing the overall results. But like I said several times across this video, free performance is free performance, even more when it is 10% or more. So guys, conclusion, as you saw using the NVIDIA Inspector and actually uh, force enabling resizable bar in some games like Dead Space Remake, Ghostwire Tokyo, we can get amazing performance uplifts in Dead Space Remake, even at 1440p ultra wide. We have around 20-25% um, performance increase depending on the scenario. Uh, some other games, once again, like Ghostwire Tokyo, also have a huge increase in the 1% lows, meaning that the, the overall smoothness of the gameplay 
uh, actually goes way better when you enable or in this case you force enable a uh, resizable bar which is great the same thing can be seen for example with smart access memory in games like red dead redemption where the minimums just increase outstandingly uh, compared to the non smart access memory results so it's a very very good thing in some other games like doom eternal it just increases by a bit it gives you like five percent more average fps but up to ten percent more fps in the one percent lows meaning once again that that the smoothness will be better um and in some other games some kind of broken games it actually makes no difference or like once again in broken games like Forspoken, it may actually mean a lower performance. And I tested it several times and it still brought lower performance with force enabling, uh, when force enabling resizable bar in that game. Maybe due to the direct storage, I don't really know, but maybe that's a thing. So if you have an NVIDIA card that does support resizable bar, let's say an RTX 3000 or 4000 series, I don't really think that the 2000 series supports resizable bar, at least software sided. But if they do, just if you have one of these cards that support resizable bar, just use NVIDIA Inspector. And if you're playing Dead Space Remake or any other of these games, uh, Doom Eternal or even maybe Ghostwire Tokyo, then you should be force enabling resizable bar because the performance uplift is insane, at least on Ghostwire Tokyo and Dead Space Remake. And I am sure that there will be more games that I did not test that will also have a very good performance uplift, uplift by force enabling resizable bar. So it's well you can also try you can also or you can just try if it if it increases the performance just let it be if it does not increase the performance you can just go there and disable it once again and you're good to go and well guys that's all for today's video thanks a lot for watching don't forget to hit like subscribe and share this video leave your comment in the comment section and let me know what you think about these performance gains and also i've been doing more nvidia related uh videos because I have the 4070 Ti now and I'm kind of exploring it a bit. But I will be returning to the usual videos, now retesting, since I actually made a poll and you guys voted, I will be retesting very, very soon the, the RX 7500 XT, I mean the 6500 XT, 6600 XT, 6650 XT and the RX 70, 6700. The other cards will be retested as well, but after that, so... Yeah. yeah. And well, guys, thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video.